وصف الأنين بداخلي كم مرة قد ذاق قلبي من أسى محرمتها وكم كرهت مصابها لكن رأيت خير يسكب في أنا كم مرة قد ضقت من عظام البال في The Prophet عليه الصلاة والسلام mentioned there were going to be three groups um, حديث صحيح بخالي صحيح مسلم The Prophet عليه الصلاة والسلام said that there will always remain a group that is going to be apparent on the truth and then he mentioned two other groups the group that's apparent on the truth is Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah the other two groups the Prophet ﷺ said لا يضرهم من خذلهم ومن خالفهم أو كما قال he said and it will not harm them the ones who are deceitful and the ones who oppose them now those who oppose the Ahlul Sunnah like click up the Shia you know the Ashaira the Maturidiya the Jahmiya you know, the Khawarij, like, th- these are clear, like, they are clearly directly in opposition to Ahlul Sunnah wa Jama'at. But then who is the deceitful group? Man khadalum. You see, a person trying to deceive you, that means they have to position themselves in a particular way. That is not actually what they really are. So, who is this deceitful group? And, I mean, we know who it is. It's the Ikhwan Muslimin. It's those who have that mentality that ideology. As you heard that man explain the hadith, the famous hadith, La tazalu ta'ifatun min ummati zahirina al haq and he carries on um, as Dawa man explained to his own whims and desires. But it's so ridiculous and so nonsensical how he explained it. It's just, it's beggar's belief. But what we're going to do first is break down the hadith, okay, and show you how he, first of all, misquoted the hadith. And secondly, the explanation was just absolutely diabolical. And we're going to go to the explanation of the Shurrah. Okay, the explanation that the commentators of the Hadith explained it. Not the way Dawaman explained it. Or this pusillanimous. Okay, so before presenting the actual translations, I'm going to present to you the Hadith from the different books of Hadith. Okay, I'm going to present them all. Then I'm going to show you the deception from Dawaman. And thereafter, I'm going to go to the commentators of the Hadith. Okay, so I'm going to, it's going to be comprehensive. So have patience with me. Okay, so as you can see, I've got Sahih Muslim. This is Sharaf Nawawi, but obviously it's Sahih Muslim. But I'm going to go to the different books. So as you can see on screen, this Hadith is narrated by Muawiyah and there's a Hadith on screen. And as you can see on screen, you got the Hadith narrated by Thawban. And he also mentions the same Hadith uh, as per what Da'am mentioned, man khadalahum, etc. etc. So two Hadith in Sahih Muslim. So here's Sahih Muslim. So now I've got. Sahih Bukhari, okay, Sahih Bukhari, and this is hadith number 3641, and as you can see, it has the same hadith in terms of the wording. Now as you can see in my hand, I've got Sunan al-Tirmidhi, okay, and as you can see on screen, this hadith has a different variation. It mentions uh, when the inhabitants of a sham become corrupt, uh, then there's no good in it for you. إِذَا فَصَدَ أَهْلُ الشَّامِ فَلَا خَيْرَ فِيكُمْ And this hadith has a slightly different wording. It says, لَا تَزَالُ طَائِفَةٌ مِّنْ أُمَّةِ مَنْسُورِينَ لَا يَضُرُّهُمْ مَنْ خَدَلَهُمْ حَتَّى تَقُومُ السَّعَةِ So this is a 2192. And then it, and also Sinan al-Tirmidhi. And the Prophet says, Indeed, I fear for my um, ummah, the misguided imam. And then the Prophet ﷺ mentioned, لَا تَزَالُ طَائِ in Sunan at tirmidhi So as you can see, I've got Sunan at tirmidhi Okay, so what I'm going to do now, I'm going to play you da'wah man. Okay, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to play you all of it. I'm just going to play you that part when he mentions the hadith and how he translated it. Okay, so let's listen. You see, the Prophet alayhi sallallahu alayhi mentioned there were going to be three groups. Um, hadith Sahih Bukhari, Sahih Muslim. The Prophet alayhi sallallahu alayhi said that there will always remain a group that is going to be apparent on the truth. And then he mentioned two other groups. The group that's apparent in the truth is Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'at. The other two groups, the Prophet Ali said, لا يضرهم من خذلهم ومن خالفهم أو كما قال. He said, and it will not harm them, the ones who are deceitful and the ones who oppose them. So as you heard that Allah mentioned, those who deceive them. Okay, that's the word that he used, those who deceive them. Then he went on a tangent uh, about, you know, the Ikhwan and Muslimin. I'm going to get to that as well. Don't worry about it, son. Don't worry about it. We're going to come to that. So he said, deceive. So deceptive, deceive, etc. Then he started painting the brush on the Khawana Muslimin and saying it's them, it's them, it's them, you know, ridiculous. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to sunnah.com, okay? And I'm going to show you the accurate translation, okay? Then I'm gonna to present to you Ma'ani, which is a website, okay, that translates from Arabic to English, okay, and show you their translation, and then I'm gonna go into the Shura. A group of my ummah 
So this is the first hadith that I quote in Sahih Muslim. It states, the Messenger of Allah وسلم, said, a group of people from my ummah will always remain triumphant on the right path and continue to be triumphant against their opponents. He who deserts them, so the word, la yadurruhum man khadalahum, is he who deserts them, shall not able to do them any harm. You see, he who deserts them. So khadala actually means desert, forsake, and you'll see in other translations as well. So that woman said, those who deceive them. Let's listen. You see, the Prophet ﷺ mentioned there were going to be three groups. Um, Hadith Sahih Bukhari, Sahih Muslim. The Prophet ﷺ said that there will always remain a group that is going to be apparent on the truth. And then he mentioned two other groups. The group that's apparent on the truth is Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah. The other two groups, the Prophet ﷺ said, لا يضرهم من خذلهم ومن خالفهم أو كما قال. He said, and it will not harm them, the ones who are deceitful and the ones who oppose them. So you, you heard, Dawah man says, from those who oppose them and those who are deceitful. It's not the accurate translation for khadalahum in this context. As you, as you can see, or you, what you saw from sunnah.com, it says those who desert them. Not those who are deceitful or deceptive. Okay, let's carry on. Now, the other hadith in Sahih al-Bukhari, Muawiyah. Anhu said, a group of people amongst my followers remain obedient to Allah's orders and they will not be harmed by anyone who would not help them or will oppose them. As you can see the Arabic, لا يزال من أمتي أمة قائمة بأمر الله لا يضرهم من خذلهم ولا من خالفهم So as so the translation so far from sunnah.com, from the different variations, desert and would not help them. What did that man say? Let's you see. The Prophet ﷺ mentioned there were going to be three groups. Um, Hadith Sahih Bukhari, Sahih Muslim. The Prophet ﷺ said that there will always remain a group that is going to be apparent on the truth. And then he mentioned two other groups. The group that's apparent on the truth is Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah. The other two groups, the Prophet ﷺ said, لا يضرهم من خذلهم ومن خالفهم أو كما قال. He said, and it will not harm them. The ones who are deceitful and the ones who oppose. And now it gets worse that you don't even know how to, you know, explain a hadith or even translate a hadith accordingly. Let's carry on. As you can see on screen, Sunnah Tirmidhi, 2192, Muawiyah bin Qurra. He says, when the inhabitants of Asham become corrupt, there is no good in it for you. There will never cease to be a group in my ummah who will be helped by Allah. They will not be harmed by those who forsake them until the hour is established. And as you can see the Arabic at the bottom, La yadurruhum. Man khadalahum hatta taqumu sa'a. So again, Sunnah Tirmidhi, what did he say? Those who forsake them. Not the deceptive group. Tirmidhi again, 2229. The other one was 2192. He said, this is right by Thawban. And he said, I only fear for my ummah from the misguiding ummah. He said that the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi said, they will never cease to be a group from my ummah. Manifest upon the truth. They will not be harmed by those who forsake them. So now what I'm going to do is, I presented the translations from sunnah.com showing you that Khadalahum or yakhduluhum means forsake, betray, etc. So now let's go into this in depth now. So we're going to go to Ma'ani, which is famously known. It's not a website that not many people know about, especially those who are you know, beginners in Arabic or intermediate or even advanced. Okay, because it's good as well for Arabic to Arabic because it then it expands on the Arabic meaning as well. As you can see on screen, Ma'ani, the website almaani.com. Okay, and I've typed in the word khadala. Okay, khadala, as you can see. Fi'l, it's a verb. Takhalla an, meaning forsaken. Takhalla an, and there's the meaning. Abandon, betray, desert in time of need, disappoint, fail someone when most needed. And then it's got khadala, and it says fi'l, desert in time of need, forsake, desert, salai. So as you see, Ma'ani confirms the translation per sunnah.com. Now, what Dawaman I think got confused with, Okay, what got confused me. Now you got to look at the context of the word as well, obviously. But I presented my case from sunnah.com and I've also got my confirmation from Ma'ani, a, a, a website that translates words from Arabic to English. What we're going to do now is show you another word which is more connected and more appropriate to the word deceptive and deceit. As you can see on screen. The word khada'a, khada'a, which is a fi'l and it also means Khatala, okay, it also means khatala. And what's the translation for those words? You can see con, cheat, deceive, defraud, delude, double cross, dupe, fool. And then also the fi'l is khudi'a. And that's is be allured by, 
be beguiled by, be dazzled, be deceived by, be deluded by, be enticed by, etc, etc. Now we're going to go into the explanation of the hadith. Because he went on a rant regarding Ikhwan and Muslimin and Ikhwan this and Ikhwan that. And he just went on a proper explanation which had no relevance to the hadith. But it shows this man is explaining hadith. This man wants to talk about Salaf al Salih and the trite aqidah and save sex. Now we're going to go to the explanation, okay? As you can see on screen, we got the book, Umdatul Qari, Shah al Bukhari, by Badr al Din al Aini al Hanafi. Al Hanafi, like myself. Imam Nawawi, okay, mentions, we call him Nawawi. He says that it is possible that this group is scattered among all types of believers. You see, it's scattered among all types of believers. Some may be brave fighters or fuqaha or scholars of hadith or uh, the Zahid or people who enjoy good and forbid evil and other types of good people. So you see why Imam, Imam Nawawi explained this hadith? It can be from amongst Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah, but from different sectors from Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah. Meaning, it could be that they are the brave fighters, it could be that the fuqaha, the scholars of hadith, the zahid, the people who enjoy the good and forbid the evil. It's not restricted to, yes, it's Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah, but there's always a victorious group. You understand? And you're not restricting it to your cronies and your safe sect, like only this ta'ifa or this majmu'a or this harakat or this tandeeb is the safe sect and everyone else is do for hal. Your safe sex syndrome or your super salafiyah syndrome mate, is a problem. I'm telling you, you need to really, really stop giving these lectures and you need to be careful because you're misguiding the people. I can say you're dal and mudil. You misguide people and you misguide yourselves. <laughs> كل الخلائق حاضرة كل السرائر بادية في موقف ما أعظم لم تخف منهم خافية والهول فيهم قد بدا الشمس منهم دانية في موقف ما أعظم لم تخف منهم خافية والهول فيهم قد بدا الشمس منهم دانية